Rabbit's Revenge. Hey, I'm Jim Fugate, and it's my privilege to share an ounce with you. Don't you just love bunnies? Those soft, cuddly, long-eared little creatures? Don't be fooled. It may be possible that bunnies are power-hungry little fiends plotting to take over the world and usurp power in any manner possible. Sure, they look docile, sweet, fuzzy, and adorable, but is it all a planned facade designed to lull humans into believing they are puffballs just looking for affection and carrots? They must be seeking revenge for being stewed and roasted for dinner by humans for centuries. Don't believe me? Well, in 1807, shortly after signing the Treaty of Tilsit, ending the wars between the French and Russian empires, Napoleon Bonaparte decided to host a little celebration. A great hunt was to be held, and 3,000 rabbits were gathered to act as prey for Napoleon and his closest generals and friends. The hunters gathered, and their prey was released. Hundreds of them began to rush straight for Napoleon. At first, he was amused, I'm sure. But as the rush grew closer, his gun bearers began swatting them away. The relentless bunnies pressed on. They began to mass about the emperor's legs and tried to climb. Napoleon decided it was time to beat a hasty retreat. As he made a beeline for the carriage, his horsemen and gun bearers continued the defensive efforts by striking at the long-eared maniacs with riding crops and the butt ends of muskets. The emperor made a narrow escape. This event was explained away as a massive domestic farm raised bunnies who had been gathered from local farmers by Napoleon's staff. These were kept in cages for a day or so without food, and upon seeing Napoleon after being released from those cages, the rabbits thought he was their keeper and rushed forward looking to be fed. But there are holes in that theory large enough to drive Napoleon's retreating carriage through. Lest you think this was an isolated incident, More recently, in April of 1979, Jimmy Carter was out on a flat-bottom boat fishing near his family home in Georgia. Suddenly, there was the sound of a splash at the edge of the lake. Turning to look at what had caused the splash, President Carter saw a bunny that had entered the water and was swimming directly toward him. Was it possible that the bunnies had decided to try a new amphibious assault strategy? Can you just imagine the Secret Service radio crackling out? Who let that bunny through the perimeter? Don't you people remember what happened to Napoleon? President Carter, though surprised, held his composure and struck out at the bunny with the paddle from the boat, splashing water and dissuading the would-be assassin from boarding the president's watercraft and taking him out. As this incident occurred while the president was enjoying some precious alone time for the White House photographer to capture, the entire assault was caught on camera. But the incident was downplayed as a desperate or crazed swamp rabbit escaping the dogs that were chasing it. And here's another surprising fact. Both of these incidents of world leaders being rushed by bunnies really did occur. So, here's the ounce. Humans have a tendency to make assumptions based on past observation and common stereotypes. We see bunnies as quiet and shy fuzzballs, But be careful, as this is not always the case. We assume that someone with little education is not intelligent. But Samuel Clemens, a.k.a. Mark Twain, the creator of the well-known characters Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer, and Henry Ford, the founder of Ford Motor Company, had very little education. We expect that knitting is a craft enjoyed by little old ladies. But Randy Grossman and Roosevelt Rosie Greer both outstanding professional football players, along with Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling, well-known actors, all knit. We make the assumption that weapon systems, especially complex ones, would be created by great male inventors. But Hedy Lamarr, a 1940s model, actress, and sex symbol, invented the radio broadcasting technology that dramatically improved weapons guidance systems and is used as the basis for the Wi-Fi you might be listening to this podcast on. While generalization and stereotypes exist for a reason, and can be very helpful in guiding us through our lives, we'd best be careful not to allow these kinds of assumptions to keep us from seeing what's really there, right in front of us. 
like the fact that bunnies really are trying to take over the world. <laughs> and that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration.